Coming up on this episode of Earth, we travel to the frozen tundra of Iceland to see how futuristic technology to remove carbon from our atmosphere actually started with simulation software. In Georgia, we find out how work is underway to slow down climate change, one aluminum can at a time. In Canada, we see how essential the chemical industry is to creating a carbon-neutral, circular society. And in New York, we see how clean air solutions have been introduced to improve air quality in work environments. Finally, we travel to Sri Lanka, where recyclable, high-performance clothing design is revolutionizing the garment industry. That's all coming up on Earth. Hi, I'm John Holden. And I'm Andrea Ocampo. Welcome to Earth. Hi, I'm John Holden. Welcome to Earth. We're starting off our show here in Iceland, a remote country that's at the forefront of solving our Earth's carbon problems in most unique ways. But the technology that's reality here now actually started with simulation software developed in the good old USA, as you're about to see. Thirty miles outside of Reykjavik, Iceland, on a tundra-like lava plateau, sits an otherworldly-looking structure. But we're not looking at the set of a sci-fi movie. We're here to explore what may be a key to moving Earth towards an important climate change solution. This structure in Iceland, known as Orca, consists of eight towering carbon collectors connected to a processing facility. Now the idea is to remove CO2 directly from the air and then actually store it underground. In fact, this is the world's first direct air carbon capture and storage facility in commercial operation and currently the largest in the world. Even though we are located in the middle of nowhere at the top of the world, we have here the first direct air capture and storage solution in the globe. So what we have are these collector containers uh, which suck in the air, the ambient air from outside, and we have a specialized filter inside that captures the CO2. It's very important to keep in mind that every ton of CO2 that you uh, take out of the air is a ton of CO2 that is not contributing to climate change. The abundant geothermal energy of Iceland provides the renewable power to operate the half-acre Orca facility that can remove up to 4,000 tons of CO2 a year from the atmosphere. After the carbon is removed, a partner company called CarbFix takes over the process to permanently store the carbon deep underground. So we take the CO2 and through pipes we inject it back to Earth and in under two years it gets mineralized so it turns into stone and under pressure uh, it mineralizes under two years and becomes rock solid as like you see this. here yeah solid carbon like this. solid carbon our aim is to store it underground and get rid of the co2 forever forever this is the process that nature uses to regulate long-term CO2 levels in the atmosphere. And over 99% of all carbon that exists on Earth is already stored in the rocks underneath us. And now we have proven that in just two years, we can permanently transform CO2 to stone, rather than it affecting uh, the climate in a negative way. So, how does a company first come up with these environmental breakthroughs? The Pennsylvania-based company integral to Orca's innovative direct air capture technology is the forward-thinking simulation software company called ANSYS. They're supporting all kinds of companies looking to solve the multifaceted challenges of climate change by developing simulation software that can help create a more sustainable future. ANSYS simulation solutions give designers and engineers the ability to explore and to predict how products will work or won't work in the real world. Above all, simulation is an enabler of innovation. 
And innovation is a key ingredient for sustainability. We help companies around the world develop the products that you rely on every day, from smarter mobile devices to cleaner electric cars and frankly everything in between. In this case, the company that created Orca's revolutionary technology is called Climeworks. Working in Zurich, Switzerland, Climeworks used ANSYS simulation software to first design and develop this critical technology. We used the ANSYS software in different parts of our process. One thing was to understand how the air flows through our collector. And knowing this, we could improve it. So you can always improve things by trial and error and using software as the ANSYS software, it could help us to move on quicker. So we could drive innovation quicker. We didn't have to build a prototype to understand it. We could model it to know if something is better or worse than what we had. This results in more efficient designs, less materials waste, and ultimately more sustainable product development. By 2030, we need to be at above 1 million tons a year. And then by mid-century 2050, we need to be at 1 billion tons a year in order to meet the challenge ahead. New technology like Orca, developed by Climeworks and ANSYS, represents just one strategy to combat climate change, but we need so much more. Orca is not a magic pill. It's very important to keep that in mind. It is a part of a holistic approach. We need every hands on deck in the fight against climate change. Simulation software from ANSYS is helping the entire industry become more sustainable by offering viable solutions in the digital domain. Here at Orca, the result of that innovation is as clear as the Iceland sky. And the air that we're breathing right here and now is a whole lot cleaner because of it. Next up, Andrea Ocampo is in Greensboro, Georgia. Ah, recycling. Slightly unglamorous, but all too crucial in the fight to protect our planet. However, it's important that you do. With the global population predicted to approach 9 billion people by 2030, we are using more resources than the planet can provide. See, the more items we reuse and recycle, the more energy we save and the less precious resources end up in landfills. That's why we're in Georgia today, where work is being done to keep the circular economy flowing while slowing down the pace of climate change, one aluminum can at a time. Aluminum is unique in that it can be recycled forever without losing any of its qualities. This means that by tossing your empty soda can in a recycling bin, you keep in circulation the metal that can be melted down and reused over and over again. Our ultimate goal is to create a circular economy and ensure that no aluminum ends up in a landfill, but it can continually come back and be recycled infinitely back into the same products over and over again. The recycling process starts with you. It starts with the can. You take a can, drink the beverage, you throw it in your recycle bin, your recycle bin gets picked up, it gets taken to a uh, recycle center, the cans get sorted, the aluminum is then broken down the cans and turned into bales like we have behind me here. Those bales then come to your local Novellus Recycling Center. Here in Greensboro, we take those bales, we run them through a bale breaker, then we run them through an impactor, then we run them through two shredders and across an air knife. Once it's all shredded, the material goes up to what's called the decoder. At that point is when the paint is all melted off of the cans at roughly 550 to 570 degrees Celsius. The metal is then transferred down to the cast center and we pour sheet ingots. Driven by their purpose of shaping a sustainable world together, Novellus works alongside customers to provide high quality, innovative products and solutions to the beverage can, automotive, aerospace and specialty markets. We have to work closely with our customers. We have to align our innovation agendas uh, and understand where we want to go more and more than we ever have if we want to jointly accomplish both of our sustainability goals. And when we talk about purpose at, at Novellus, it's not something that we created, we excavated it. It's truly who we are in our history. And so it's so true to who we are 
and building a sustainable world together. You may be thinking, what's one can and the grand scheme of things? But did you know that a used aluminum drink can be recycled and back on the store shelves as a new drink can in less than two months? However, if you simply toss it in the trash, it goes to a landfill where it can sit around for 500 years before it actually oxidizes. It's that staggering statistic that drives novellas to recycle more aluminum than anyone else on the planet. With an unmatched commitment to sustainability, we have an ambition to be the world's leading provider of low carbon, sustainable aluminum solutions. And our focus for the goals are on carbon reduction, uh, reduction of water and energy usage, as well as the amount of waste that we send to landfills. The carbon reduction goals that we've set for ourselves is to be a carbon neutral company by 2050 or sooner. And we have an interim goal to achieve a 30% reduction in our carbon footprint by 2026. Recycling aluminum cans is good business. In many states, aluminum cans generate revenue for recyclers, with aluminum beverage cans typically the most valuable material in the residential recycling stream. Looking at metal recycling generally, it has a great economic impact and supports more American jobs than the recycling of all the other commodities combined. Increasing the aluminum can recycling rate to 90% in the United States would generate $1.6 billion for the economy, add more than 100,000 jobs, keep 1.3 million tons of aluminum out of landfills, and reduce annual greenhouse gas emissions by 2.1 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent. For us, sustainability is part of our business and who we are. And if we continue to lean in and lead, we will reach our ambition to be the world's leading provider of low carbon, sustainable aluminum solutions. Aluminum's unique properties allow it to be uh, recycled on an infinite basis. So we just need to keep everything out of a landfill, bring it back into the loop. So please keep aluminum in the loop. Recycle. Sustainability is the heart of Novellus. Their dedication to environmental stewardship defines who they are, what they do, and why they do it. Who knew that such a small can could hold such huge potential? So next time you pop open a cool can of your favorite beverage, think ahead about what you plan to do when the last drop is gone. Until next time. So no, I'm not enjoying a Caribbean vacation this week. Rather, I'm exploring this beautiful sandy tract of land that's much further north, right here in the middle of beautiful downtown Toronto, Canada. Now this area is called Sugar Beach, not because of the sand around me, but rather because of the huge sugar refinery that towers over it. Also overlooking this urban reprieve is the Office of Pollution Pro, Canada's oldest environmental charity. For more than half a century, this agent of change has worked with the industry on a variety of issues like banning toxic substances, controlling greenhouse gas emissions, promoting the three R's of reduce, reuse, and recycle, and promoting circular economies. Because our motto is clean air and clean water, two uh, things that we are very interested in are toxic chemicals. The really big one right now that everybody is focused on is plastic pollution, whether it's in the oceans or here in the Great Lakes in our fresh water. So our job is to kind of keep an eye on things, help them identify uh, where their issues, often they know the issues, but we work collaboratively to come up with responses and solutions. Pollution Probe works with the Chemistry Industry Association of Canada, or CIAC, which invented the Responsible Care Initiative. It's one of the world's original environmental social governance programs, commonly referred to as ESG. Responsible Care, I think, is a great example because it, it was actually created by the industry itself after a, a huge chemical disaster in Bhopal, India. And it was created here in Canada, which is interesting. But there was a response to try and anticipate and make sure that these kind of things never happen again. So it's a a constantly evaluative mechanism for the industry itself to look at the, the safety, the environmental impacts uh, of its operations, um, which is, you know, it's probably one of the leading mo industry-led models in the world. The chemical industry plays a crucial role in creating a carbon-neutral circular society because chemistry is used in 95% of manufactured goods. 
it's the third largest manufacturing sector in Canada, generating $80 billion in shipments every year in key industrial sectors like agriculture, mining, energy, food, and aerospace. CIAC members are committed to resource conservation to keep our waterways, oceans, and air clean and to lower greenhouse gas emissions. The key thing is about trust, and the industry was in a place where it wasn't trusted. It wasn't trusted by the communities, it wasn't trusted by workers, it wasn't trusted by regulators. The whole initiative was to re-earn trust, and that took two things. One was radical improvements in performance, environmental performance and safety performance, and the second thing was significant increase in the accessibility and transparency of the company's operations and the record of its performance. Today, uh, it's in 73 countries worldwide, 96 of the 100 largest chemical companies in the world participate and the program's been recognized by the United Nations. So it's a, it's a real accomplishment, a made in Canada success story that's now spread to the industry around the world. So Responsible Care is, is the ESG standard for the global chemistry industry today. Now CCC Sulphur Products is one example of Responsible Care's ethics and principles in action. Its manufacturing facility is located here in Elmira, Ontario, right outside of Toronto. And its president is the founding member of the Global Responsible Care Program. Our steam uh, process really dates back to or, or why we have this excess steam available. We doubled the size of our plant uh, in 2011. And um, as a result of the doubling of the size of the plant, we are also able to reduce our emissions by 95%. CIAC is very impactful because really what it does is help us get a collective voice uh, at the government levels in order to direct policy, uh, or at least help the, uh, the officials direct policy as to what's going to be achievable in the chemical industry. And we're all in this together. Our goal is to make sure that our environment is, is there for the future. BASF Canada is another standout member of CIAC and its Responsible Care Initiative. The company operates more than 10 sites across Canada. BASF implemented a Responsible Care Management System in 2007, which applies to all companies in the BASF group and companies in which it holds a majority share. We really want to drive away from a linear or a take-make-waste model more into a circular economy model. So in the world of plastics, we have a product called Resichain, where we are working to develop a tracking and sorting technology uh, that's traceable and that we work with all of the partners along the supply chains. CIAC, it's great, it's a great advocate, it's really supportive, it helps us a lot in, in all of our dealings both with government and you know pushing the agenda in terms of um, plastic circularity and we're really quite involved in their plastics leadership development group as well as just CIAC in general, you know, we're a great voice and a great partner. You ever wondered what our world would look like if we really thought of waste as a resource? We really committed to that strategy, it would almost be like the days of the Industrial Revolution, or in this case, when a city takes its inner city and instead makes it into a beautiful Caribbean resort. Next stop, Buffalo, New York. How many times a day do you breathe? 15 breaths per minute? That's just shy of 22,000 breaths over 24 hours. So it's safe to say air quality is hugely important for our well being. We're aware of the importance of good air quality in the great outdoors. But what about indoors? Over the last years, COVID 19 has made us rethink how we view clean air indoors. But the truth is, it was widely important even pre pandemic. Breathing unhealthy air at work can be dangerous, but it's also preventable. Let's take a closer look. Pollution in indoor work facilities can be several times worse than outdoor air pollution due to the nature of industrial processes and in relatively confined spaces, workers find it difficult to avoid breathing poor air quality. Fortunately, Modern industrial air cleaning technologies can eliminate dust and other pollutants at the source before they can interfere with employee health or machinery and goods. We spend 90% of our time indoors, whether that be in a workplace or at home. It's vital that uh, the breathable air is good for us, it isn't harming us. 
And of course, if you improve indoor air quality, you're improving your health, productivity, your comfort, you have better employee relations and a better story to tell about your work environment. It's impossible to define air pollution for any setting because they're all, as I said, different. So it's vitally important that we do assess each individual situation and look at what can be done to improve it. Zender Clear Air Solutions stands for energy efficient products for a healthy and comfortable indoor climate, thus helping to improve the quality of life. We believe that clean air is critical to businesses because it protects their equipment. It also helps them with their image, both in the factory floor and also on the product that they ship out. And most importantly, it protects their employees because bad air quality is breathed in by employees every day. So we want to listen to our customers, we want to be responsive to their needs, and then innovate based on what they're telling us. Given how much has changed in other aspects of life, you would be forgiven for thinking that it's purely the result of the COVID-19 pandemic. That is not the case, however. The subject of air quality extends far beyond the ongoing pandemic. Ensuring proper ventilation in the workplace is no more crucial now than it always has been. Employers in the manufacturing sector face the challenge of protecting the health of millions of workers while actively inside their factories generates air pollutants. Such hazards can cause new health issues, but are especially dangerous to the tens of thousands of manufacturing workers with pre-existing conditions like asthma, or in the worst case, cancer. There are a range of benefits for getting fresh air at the workplace. It can de-stress and help improve your physical well-being. And for businesses, ensuring good air quality for workers is imperative and bottom line priority. Well, sustainability definitely no longer is just a buzzword. Today, I think it's an obligation uh, for small companies, for big companies. I think it's even an expectation from pretty much all our stakeholders, customers, uh, but also our employees, for example, investors. Uh, and they, they demand real impact. And, and I think that's good because it's not just for us, but it's also for the future generations. Air pollution has an impact on every organ of the human body from particulates that affect directly the lungs to the tiny fine particles that go through the bloodstream and can affect every part of the body, including neurological function, to gases like nitrogen dioxide that inflame the airways and trigger asthma attacks. It's vital to assess air pollution and improve it. As it's largely an invisible problem, it's been ignored for too long, but now is a, a real chance to improve everybody's health and well-being. OSHA lists a permissible exposure limit for a wide variety of hazardous dust, but what they don't do is publish a list for non-hazardous dust like simply dust, smoke, dirt, pollen. The World Health Organization actually recommends 50 micrograms per cubic meter, but in many indoor environments it's many times higher recorded. Um, we tend to get called in actually after there's been a fine or a warning, um, and typically it starts by an employee calling in a complaint. So start with cleaner. Uh, we breathe in air every minute of every day, so it's important that that air is of the highest quality. There is a trend to better indoor environment, sometimes also by legislation, uh, depending on the industry, and to uh, certify your buildings for these kind of standards. Such a air purification system can easily help you to get to these standards. And so obviously we are really a problem solver for these kind of customers. In a competitive business environment, high standards at work will go a very long way to getting noticed. A clean, healthy working environment will help attract the best employees and even new business. At the end of the day, creating a clean workplace with happy employees and increased productivity is easy and affordable if you choose the right solution. Until next time. Our next story takes us to Sri Lanka, a small Asian country off the southern coast of India. Scenic wonders abound here for me to capture on my smartphone, from its elephant safari parks and wild monkeys to its famous World Heritage archaeological site, Sigiriya. But Sri Lanka is also a land of 22 million hardworking people, firmly dedicated to work, family, and their religious beliefs. Where the Food staple is rice, grown in patties like this one, and the number one export is clothing. 
but a disruptive change is happening in the clothing industry. And that change, though, is a benefit to our environment, as you're about to see. Clothing and fashion are big business in Sri Lanka, where the industry employs more than a half million people. In fact, global sales of apparel and footwear are expected to reach $3 trillion by 2030. And yet about three-fifths of all clothes end up in a landfill within a year of being made. That amounts to more than $500 billion worth of wasted clothing. But thankfully, our environment is becoming ever more important to clothing manufacturers, especially in countries like Sri Lanka. Now, some clothing manufacturers, like Incube in Sri Lanka, are working to make their processes more sustainable. They're working for a future of using much less water, creating less waste, and really designing greener factories like this one that are designed to fit in to the environment around it. Incube is a young company with big dreams. We believe clothing as an industry has been slow and is up for disruption. And so for the philosophy for us is that A, we think there's a lot more value we can give the consumer and B, we think there are by giving that value in a more thought out way, we can make the planet a more sustainable place to live. Incube hopes to change the perception of clothing as a basic means to cover our bodies and look fashionable to clothing that can actually increase human potential for a better and more sustainable life. It aims to create clothing solutions with far less impact on the environment by fusing future technology with ingenious design. I think there's enough technology out there within the next decade and a half to reduce or, or to repeat what we do today with almost 10 to 15 percent of the impact. Now this is a big dream, I understand, but the technology is out there. It requires us to think, design differently, but it's possible. If the clothing can be adaptable and keep changing with our needs from you know, one next year to another, I think that'll be the future of clothing. Incube designers are committed to bringing next generation clothing solutions to life. The company represents a joint venture with Brandex Group, a billion dollar apparel manufacturing group headquartered here. And as you may guess, Incube works with some of the world's most high visibility brands. It's really important for us to understand uh, the commitments that the brands are making towards sustainability and align all of our efforts in sustainability to the progress that they're making. Like one brand is using longevity and extending the lifetime of product, maybe another brand would give the intention as converting all of their material bases into recyclable materials. That's how we align our efforts to brands' goals so that the actual value of sustainability is realized in the hands of the ultimate consumer. From the use of renewable resources to designing for longevity and using technology to create products that do more with less, Incube's next generation clothing is designed to help millions of people live better lives. Manufactured by Sri Lankans who show as much reverence to factory work life as they do to their own family and religion. We have about 2,500 people and uh, it's a family here. The setting is such that okay, we start the day with religion. Our people come, worship with Buddha. They start the day and it's a family feeling. When they start a new product, new program, it's, it's how they start off because that's the level of reverence and worship that they give even for the work that they do. This work ethic has resulted in the innovative transition of clothes from being fast fashion or basic attire to clothes that serve a useful purpose and can actually improve your health. It's an outfit that is designed to provide adaptive thermal comfort and what that means is that it's designed to keep you warm when it's cold and keep you cool when it's warm. Not only does it fit, it gives you support, but beyond that we could actually knit sensors into this that can actually take your vitals 24 hours of the day, right? ensure whether you have a medical condition or whether you're coming into a condition, make it smarter, make it work for you and solve the climatic problems, the medical problems, the health, whatever you want it to be. As founder and managing director of Incube, Dylan Gunratne hopes the sustainable path-breaking approach to our clothing will be the catalyst needed to disrupt the entire apparel industry. We should be using clothing as a platform to solve bigger problems for the consumer, become bigger utilities, something that they want to keep and pass on to the next generation. So people, planet, 
these are the two driving forces and the considerations that we have when creating product. It's all about building value through clothes that are both fashionable and functional. Call it wearable wellness. Clothes made for the health of our body and the health of our planet. I'm John Holden. Thanks for watching.